I am so glad to be here. This is one of the meetings I love. My name is Linda G.S. Please excuse my voice. There's something happening with it, but I'm getting like a good gray sheet or I'm getting medical help for it. But it's so far, it's still gravelly and I apologize. Um, who am I? I'm a compulsive overeater who is abstinent today because I weigh and measure three meals a day off our wonderful copyrighted gray sheet, commit them to my sponsor, don't eat in between, no matter what. And thanks to the grace of God and a fellowship like you, um, I am abstinent since May 2nd, 1999. And um, I don't know how it happened. And it, what I'm trying to get today, um, there's so much good in my life because of Gracie. <clears throat> my life is totally flipped upside down. But I have to talk to you. I have to experience strength and hope. What was my experience? What was it like before? Um, <clears throat> by the way, when I tell my mantra, I had an aha moment at a face-to-face -face meeting on Saturday um, when somebody said in their mantra that they weighed and measured three meals a day, and I eat them too. <laughs> and, and, you know, I never thought, I guess someone could say their mantra, and they just you know, weigh and measure the meals, but never eat the whole thing. So of course I eat every bite and not a bite more. Um, <clears throat> but it just, you know, it's one of those things you hear and think, I never thought of it that way. Um, I've been a compulsive eater, um, overeater since I was a child. Um, there were photos of me with, you know, bags of stuff in my hands. Um, I, there was some article when there was a, an art opening that little Linda came and saw her portrait on the wall. And then she went over to the refreshment table and stayed there the rest of the evening. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I was outed before I could do anything. Um, <clears throat> but I was an only child. So I don't have those memories of sisters and brothers saying, hey, you took this. Why did you do that? Why? Um, in my house, I could go and take anything. And my folks never told, said, oh, you know, you can't eat that. But I was always a chubbette, chunky kid. Uh, you know, I saw a picture of me going off to high school, uh, not high school, college. And I had, you know, all these double chins. Um, probably not much better now, but at 76, they're to be expected, not when you're 18 or 17. Um, and I, th I always say that I knew my, all of a sudden I started living with people, and that makes the big difference. And I know my disease kicked in when I would start stealing from uh, my friends. I would go into their rooms when they weren't there. And, you know, I, I look back and I think, these were nice people. They probably would have said, oh, Linda, sure, have whatever you want. But I didn't do that. Instinctively, I, steal, I stole, I snuck in. And um, uh, so I didn't date a lot in, high school, in college or in high school. Um, and, you know, I had a few things where... It was okay to stand me up or ask for a date. I know I got a ride home with a couple of girls and they started talking about the guy who supposedly I was gonna go, uh, had a date with that Saturday night. And they like, oh yeah, you know, um, where are you gonna go? And so it obviously was a setup. And it, you know, things like that really hurt. Um, and so I would go home and eat. Um, uh, when I was a young mother, that's when I wasn't the person I wanted to be. Um, I screamed, I yelled at my kids. I um, <clears throat> had, you know, I would, I had a son who was very compliant and, and but my daughter would sort of say to me, you don't have to raise your voice at us, you know, <clears throat> which didn't stop me, of course. But my son um, and he's a great kid, a kid today, sorry. He's younger and older than a lot of you, 50. Um, but he would 
I would hold him by the hair, not pulling it, but just hold him by the hair to reprimand him or something. And I look back and I'm thinking, that was abuse. That's not how you treat kids. And when I see how my grandkids are, are, are treated, I wish I could go back. Um, all I can do today is be a good grandma and, and a good mom and, a, you know, to my adult, two adult children. And <clears throat> we moved from Connecticut over here so that we could help our daughter who had become a widow about six years ago. Um, her husband had leukemia and left these three small kids. So today I'm very involved in the grandkids' life. And then there's also something called Portal. It's like a screen, but it's sort of like an iPad looking, but it stands up. But the two-year-old grandson out in um, California will go and push, call grandma at, you know, eight o'clock his time, and it's 11 here, it's great. But hearing this little boy saying, hi, Grandma Yinda, with a Y, you know, and it, it just, you know, I'm trying to make up for what I was. I couldn't be a good mom when I was eating because it really does rob your life. And <clears throat> sometimes we think about some other addictions that have you falling down dead, which we can from uh, uh, heart disease and <clears throat> um, diabetes. But it's not, I talked to somebody today and they said, but you know, we have to eat, and it is true, but it's very easy for me. You know, it's funny. I've thought of this. We can't, I can't put the plug in the jug, but I can take out my gray sheet, and if it's on there and I've committed it, I can eat it. So, you know, it's, I do have the playpen to play in, um, and it's not, the, you know, and at the end of the day, um, what this guy told me was he was dating somebody and I think she was in a different food fellowship, but she would make him put locks on her cabinet so she wouldn't go and eat things in the middle of the night. And I said, thank you. I don't need that because when, and I'm sad sometimes at the end of a meal, um, at a dinner, I mean, <laughs> but another meal is coming. I know I'm going to have a wonderful, terrific breakfast. And so I don't even think of going into that cab, those cabinets at night. Um, and, you know, and then I also, when I was new here, I drank an awful lot of herbal teas, you know, because I felt as long as I was putting something in my mouth, I couldn't feel hungry. I don't have to do that today. Like over on the counter there is a cup with a tea bag in it. And it's been about three days that I started to heat the water for it. You know? And it's like, it's okay. And I, if I were hungry, I would go do it. But, you know, I forget. I, it's amazing how the cravings cease. They don't, one, they don't cease immediately. And two, I never quite trust them ceasing because any minute I could look around and I think Last week sometime, I, it came in my head like, oh, there's that. That looks good. So I never think of it as a been there, done there, all, you know, no cravings. Um, I, it is true. When I first came in here, into Gray Sheet 21 years ago, actually, because I went back to day one several times, um, I did want something to suck on if I had a sore throat. And my sponsor said, no, we don't do that in gray sheet. And what was amazing to me was, uh, I'm hearing something, okay, um, was I could see the reason for it. When I was in another food fellowship for 15 years, 13 years, pardon, excuse me, before I got into gray sheet, I cheated and I lied and I went and had alcohol and I, I did all the day ones that you could think of because I was still eating the carbohydrates. I am such a carbohydrate sensitive person that no matter how healthy something is supposed to be, um, I used to have a grain for breakfast every morning. Guess what? I didn't particularly like it. 
but I had it every morning because my body knew a pre-diabetic kind of sensitive body, it turned into sugar in me. And so I, I went and had it. Um, I can't do that. I was in also another food program uh, fellowship where they had four meals a day. You had three meals and then you had this metabolic adjustment in the evening. Well, today I don't need that. I'm fine. Once my meal ends, I'm, you know, I'm good for the night. But what did I put in it? I took so many carbohydrates in there that, you know, that were allowed. I also remember in the other food fellowship, I didn't read labels. So I would go and have something that was sugar free. Well, I found out when I got into gray sheet, it wasn't just sugar. It wasn't really sugar free. It was just, they didn't add sugar, but it still made me react so much. Um, I also used to have, um, no, I, I don't think I can describe it. I'm, I'm not going to describe food, but it was something that they insisted was made from a vegetable so I could have it. And when I got into gray sheet, the word on the package was very clearly wheat. But I'm, you know, I didn't want to know that. So I just believe what they told me. So I'm grateful today that I read labels and know what I'm eating. Um, how has my life changed? Um, <sighs> we, um, we were lived 23 years out in Connecticut in the house where I grew up. And I really love being in Connecticut. You had a free beach five minutes away you could go down to. And um, Teddy's nodding because she lived out about 20 minutes from there. Um, it was a nice place to live. And I loved the house. But you know, there's a phrase in the big book that says, contempt prior to investigation. And that was me for about 12 years, 10 years, when my husband said, hey, what about that retirement community in New Jersey? I was like, nope, I want to stay here. I want the school bus across the street. I want the little kids waving at me. Hi, Mrs. Smith. Well, I just broke my last name. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, I, you know, I loved it there. But um, He's getting older. I'm getting older. Both our kids three years ago said, you know, why don't you consider going in a place where it's a retire a continuing care retirement community? And I was like, no. Well, I decided just to come and visit it one day. What could that hurt? Okay. Well, we came in July, whatever, through 2016. And if I've always felt if I let my gray sheet abstinence guide me. I make good decisions. And it's happened over and over and over again. And um, we came and they had a big vat of iced tea. Well, every, um, what, uh, art opening out in Connecticut, every library meeting, whatever, I could never have it. So I took the water and I didn't complain, but I, you know, that's all I could have. Um, I asked Ken, I said, does that have sugar in it? But it always did. So why was I even asking? And he took a sip and he said, no, it's unsweetened. And it was like the, the skies opened up and someone was saying, my higher power, like, Linda, they get you. You can take put sugar into something, you can't take it out. And so, you know, they would have these big baths of it. They also had, um, you know, we get one meal a day. And they had just switched over to what they called signature dining, which means that they cook it fresh for you. So, you know, I can't have everything on the menu, no. Look at all the compulsive eaters around here, you know. But I can always have a good number of choices. Um, and, and I love that. And then we cook lunch and breakfast at home. So um, it's been a good place. I've been active. Teddy, how long do I have? Six minutes? Oh. I wonder if you'll get, okay, I'll think of some of the things that have happened over the years that, that changed because of Gray Sheet. Um, when I was in Gray Sheet, I went, I had some lung trouble 
a couple of bubbles called pneumatoceles in my lungs. So they were checking my lungs every six months or something out in Connecticut. And then one day, my, my doctor said, Linda, your lungs look fine. But I can see in a chest x-ray, it was aimed too low, and I can see the tail of the pancreas, and I see you have a tumor in your pancreas. Well, you know, I don't want to deal with, my, my grandmother died of pancreatic cancer. And so um, I went, and again, I asked the gastroenterologist, and I said, where would you send your, is your daughter? And he said, Oh, and he named a place in Boston, in New York, and Johns Hopkins. So we went down there, and they took it out, and it was benign. But when my husband said, could Linda just have had an x-ray every six months, he blanched. And he said, oh, no. He said, in the pancreas, even a benign tumor can grow out and influence other things. And one of the things, they took out my gallbladder. For a lot of people, that's a problem, um, or not having the tail of the pancreas. For me, it was all okay over the 11 years, 12 years since then, because the kind of food we eat isn't the kind that I would have a gallbladder, you know, problems with the gallbladder. Um, I've had other things recently. We went on vacation. You also get a sense of humor in Gray Sheet. Um, we went on vacation and only had a six day vacation. Four of them, I was in the hospital from a collapsed lung, which apparently was that same, thank you, same little um, uh, pneumatoceal had burst. But, um, you know, I was in a place where my daughter and son and husband were nearby. They could bring food to me in the hospital, staying uh, abstinent no matter what, no matter what, that's my favorite phrase, no matter what in the hospital, in my kitchen, wherever we, at friends' homes, no matter what. And I am grateful, grateful to be abstinent and to be here. Thanks for letting me share.